aflatoxin has been here since the 1960s when aflatoxin was actually detected. But from there on we have had outbreaks in livestock and it's only in 1981, from 1960, we had then an outbreak in humans. Patients of acute aflatoxicosis do present with symptoms such as jaundice, uh, oedema, uh, extended abdomens, and uh, painful abdomens. These are serious health effects to the humans. Beside the acute uh, aflatoxicosis, we do have uh, the chronic aflatoxin exposure. This I refer to as the bigger problem lying underneath the iceberg, that is of the acute aflatoxin exposure. When the animals are fed aflatoxin contaminated feed, there is a risk of transmission of the aflatoxin into the animal product. A very small portion is carried over into the meat and the eggs, but the major problem is that some percentages are carried over into milk of dairy cows, and these are then consumed by people. In Kenya, for example, the milk consumption is very high. It's uh, more than 100 liters per person a year, almost five times as high as other African countries. And this milk consumption is focused to very susceptible categories, such as nursing or pregnant mothers or young children, where the health effects can actually be more serious than for other people. CDC here in Kenya is working in a close association with the Ministry of Health to better the surveillance systems, especially in relation to public health, working with the district disease surveillance officers who go out to the villages to collect samples for analysis at the national public health labs. We are looking to do a complete risk assessment from the aflatoxin levels in the feed served to the cattle over to the milk and to the milk consumers in order to be able to form a background for policy makers and to really provide a scientific background for this problem. We will also look at cost benefits of potential interventions in the dairy value chains and also look at the possibility of using probiotic lactic acid bacteria as a possibility to inhibit fungal growth and aflatoxin binding. Biocontrol is one of the strategies of managing aflatoxin and, and we feel strongly about it because it is a preventive mechanism and uh, it targets the fungus that produces the aflatoxin while the crop is still in the field. We have a product that we are now working on called Aflasif KE0, so far tested in about 850 farmers' fields. Most of those are found in eastern Kenya because that is where you have several hotspots or aflatoxin uh, problems. In Nigeria, where the product has already received uh, provisional registration, uh, on-farm trials resulted to aflatoxin reduction of over 70 percent in many cases over 80 percent and even in some cases we got 90 percent uh, reduction in aflatoxin so we do know that it works and the beauty of the technology is that it targets uh, to to address the issue of aflatoxin along the valley chain that's one that means we apply pre-harvest but we also get effects uh, positive effects post-harvest but also secondly it is not an input that the farmer has to use every season yeah, we call that the carryover effect. And of course, that translates to positive benefits in terms of cost for the farmer. What we've done is we've established a research and capacity building platform so that African scientists and their partners can tackle this very complex problem. And we've made great advances towards that. As part of the project, we're looking at four things. First of all, we need to be able to see the enemy in order to defeat it. So we're working on appropriate diagnostics, both for the lab and for the field, so that we can test for the aflatoxin. Part of this is also appropriate sampling procedures. Another thing that we're doing is we're working on knowing exactly where to plant which maize varieties. 
So we're working with the National Maize Breeders of Kenya and Tanzania to really develop varieties that will accumulate lower aflatoxin levels. In addition to that, we want to understand the scope of the problem. So we're working with collaborators in Australia, Kenya, Tanzania, US, and South Africa to develop risk maps. And these maps are based on on-farm surveys, and they'll tell us what is the risk of aflatoxins in maize in the given year that we look at, but furthermore, what are farmers growing and how can they change that? So there are going to be tools that can be interrogated by policymakers and other decision makers so they can pick the right interventions without having to spend the resources beforehand to test them in the field. Let's get our best bets.